What's up, everybody? So I wanted to do candy shares. I'm not going to cover everything on Richard's uh, one video. So I'm going to make uh, as many videos as I can answering everybody's questions. Because this book, if anything, all it does is like bring up questions. <laughs> all right? And I will do my best to uh, help everybody in the chat and decipher this book. But that's my idea. So, um, all right, let's get to it. There was a question here. That's pretty good. All right. So helpful. Thanks, Super Mario Cat. I appreciate that. I'm very much beginning to the point. All right. Um, I went through this book recently because I kind of had the least amount of time. Okay. I'm not interested in learning details like that. Yeah, of course not. Get it. Um, the thing is, you want to you want to think about like uh, what it is you want, first of all, right? What do you want to do? Answer that question first. I mean, you're gonna have a lot of teachers that say a lot of stuff. Right? Maybe the teachers are saying yes, this is it. But you don't want what the teacher. I would first say, what do you want? What do you want to do? What are you interested in? Right? So let's go ahead and dive into that. What do you want to do? Animation? Illustration? Comic? Or your art? Okay. So let's get down to it. If it's your art, it doesn't matter. It's up to you. If you want to be your own art, it doesn't matter. You just do whatever the hell you want. You do it with your toes, anatomy, no anatomy, sculpt anatomy, it doesn't matter. Um, hi, wife. <laughs> All right. So, I wasn't my wife, that was my daughter. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. So, art's hard. That's how I see it. And usually, when people say you look at my art, I'll, I'll always look at art and enjoy it. Just what it is, but rarely would I ever get my opinion and say, you could have said, how can you say for Van Gogh? You can't. You can't say for Van Gogh. He asked me what I thought of his enough blue. I don't know. How do you feel about it? So that's how I feel about art. Let me know that's your art. I'll enjoy it. Don't ask me to critique it, because that's critiquing my art. Sure, we're off. Okay. Um, animation. You know, some guys just want to stick to the cartoony stuff, right? There's not a lot, a lot of the human anatomy that uh, entails here. I mean, let's look at it, right? Uh, that's not working out. Right let's do that. Yeah, man. Like, there's a lot of circles. I don't think you, you know, in this case, I don't think so, you know? But then you get to um, Hercules, right? And in this case, it's, you know, there's some anatomy, but not a lot, right? And usually in, in these cases, the animator, the supervising animator who made up these model sheets will, will sit down and talk to his team and teach them how to draw the character and stuff like that. So, you know, um, should you know anatomy here? I think a lot of it's dependent, in my opinion, on the model sheet. The model sheet will give you turnarounds of the hands the head, different expressions, they'll even give you like more like an idea of how like the body moves. And then usually what happens when you animate, you give it to your supervising animator, your supervising animator will go over your drawings, make sure they're done well and on model. But your job as the animator is to bring it to life. It can be rough drawing and all that stuff. But when it comes to model, that's another department. It's obviously always better when the animator knows how to draw it on model, but is it required? You know, it's obviously great if you can do it, but me as a supervising animator, I just require my guys to animate rough. Rough it out, make it come to life, I'll take care of putting it on model, no problem. That's my area. And I deal with my cleanup crew, me and my cleanup crew will sit down and we'll talk about how to put this thing on model, how to take a rough piece of animation, and you know, make it look good. Um, so yeah. 
So that's that. Center the rest. Uh, illustration. Norman Rockwell, like hands down one of my favorite illustrators of all time. But Norman used photographs like crazy. You know, did he need to know anatomy? You know, he actually took Bridgman's class, by the way. He was one of his students in New York. It's kind of neat. Um, I mean, he knew it. I mean, he took the classes, but in the end, you look at what he's doing. It's no different from like, I bet if the guy had Photoshop, he'd have lived in Photoshop land, taking pictures, use the liquify tool, put things in layers, and mess with color. But I mean, yeah. Illustration land, I don't see why you need to a little bit here. That's my opinion, right? I'm just trying to be objective here. I'm not trying to give you my bias and say, yes, you should know the bone, you should know the muscles, you should know everything. Like, I'm not that guy. I'm usually the guy to ask, what do you want from it? Comic. So, yeah. Clearly we have an example on the left where like, the anatomy doesn't look like correct, right? But it doesn't matter. There's so many styles to it, right? And then you get the one in the middle, Jim Lee. And then Jim Lee, like, even he said it in his interview, I don't know anatomy, I know shapes, and I love the Bridgman book, right? So, you know, and then you see that Spider-Man on the right. I don't know. So, how should you start off? Define what it is you want to do. That's it. You define what it is you want to do, and you start from there, right? So let's finish off your question. I didn't read the whole thing. All right. This was refreshing to hear your perspective on Bridgman. I'm struggling, and I assume some of those methods just aren't for me. Still get lost in the Bridgman incidental mark makings in his drawings. How much should I copy when you try to copy the figures? Should I ignore most of the smaller... Mark details. Maybe that's it. I'm still not seeing the overall shapes yet. Looking for details. Thanks again. Love these reviews. Cool. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you should copy it. You know, like I don't. I don't know. Like uh, so. I hope that you know. I hope you reply to my video and you let me know what it is you want to do because then I'll be able to direct you a better way to go. You know. So I can give you a little insight with what it is I want to do. So for me, I want to do it all, man. I want to do, here, I'll show you. I want to do nice poses. I want to know how to do dynamic poses. I want to know how to do weak poses. This is me. I, this is what I want, right? For what reason? Because I want to do it all. I want to do comics. I want to do animation. I want to do caricature. I want to do illustration. I want it all. I want to do sculpture. I want to do airbrush. And why? Why not? <laughs> Some people say, uh, you're a jack of all trades, master of none. I'm not interested in being a master. I'm interested in wanting to do the things I've always wanted to do. It's my life. And in my lifetime, I want to be able to touch on all these things and be well-versed in it. That's how I see it. And has it hurt me in my career? Hell no. It's only opened more doors for me in my career. So the way I see it is, that's what I want. I want to be able to learn how to do nice dynamic poses. I want to know anatomy. I want to learn the bones. I want to know every little strand. I want to know what it is it does. I want to know what happens when you move the arm. I, I'm a fan of this stuff. I want to know. For me, design. I want to know design. I want to know how to draw like that. I want to know how you're able to put these lines together and make something look beautiful with like knowledge and you know, just I want to understand these things. So that's what I'm in it for. Negative spaces. This word has been said before and I didn't understand it until I saw this artist. His name is Tia Sullivan. And his stuff is so clear. Everything has beautiful negative spaces. like. Like this hand, right? You can't tell I have five fingers until I do this. 
But I'm, I still don't have the full five, right? The boom. Very clear. I have five fingers, right? When I drink a cup, that's not clear. This is, you know, like clear silhouettes. I'm, I love clarity. And um, Tia Salton does this for me. So I hunt for this stuff for good clarity in the work. Caricature. I love caricature. And again, this is T.S. Solomon. He knows caricature. He pushed a pig's design so well. And this is the stuff I aim for. And this is, you know, brings me joy to see, you know. Um, does he know anatomy? I don't know, actually. I don't. There's some parts where he indicates and some parts where he doesn't, you know. Um, but he knows his shapes. He has strong shape language, strong caricature. I mean, look at that guy in the left, for God's sake. So flowy, so nice, isn't it? So. And then there's unique art style, right? Like, I'm in it to find my own art style. What, 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 tick, what, 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 uh, what fancies me? What makes me me, you know? You get Al Hirschfield on the far right. You know, he did his thing. You got Mike Magnolia. You got Chris Sanders on the left. You got Frazetta Girls, Norman Rockwell, um, Tim Burton, right? And Ronald Searle. I mean, I'm just looking at it. I already know who it is, right? And that's, 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 that's the journey that I'm in now. Like, all these years I've been sitting here learning anatomy, character, drawing, drawing well. But in my, my, from what I want, this is the stuff I want. And now I'm at a point where I want to develop my own art style, and I don't know what that means. So that's the journey that I'm in. So if you guys see my other videos with like making my video game and things like that, that's it. So I know that's a, that's a lot, um, but let me go ahead and do some drawing because I, I hate just talking and not doing drawing. So let's do some drawing. The kind of drawing that I'm going to do, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, bridging, okay? So let's do that. Where are we at? That's a video. Hmm. Let me change this to... Alright, cool. We're going to draw now. And then we're going to look at some bridging, okay? All right, we're going to make some key observations here with Bridgman. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so um, we're going to touch on him. You know, again, the more questions I get, the more I'm able to really expand on more of this book, right? So when I'm, when I'm looking at Bridgman stuff, what I'm seeing is when you look at these type of drawings, they all have this feeling like it's been made of marble. It ain't stone. It ain't clay. It feels like the guy is playing God and he has marble in his hands and he's describing these things. The gentleman on the right, just standing there, makes it look like marble is sitting on the guy's leg. These are, these things are heavy, you know? Um, yeah, exactly this. Heavenly constructed. It feels like they're robots. Everything here feels like a robot. Yeah, same thing here. You know, it's it's very appealing to see because it feels like everything has weight, right? So I would say, in my opinion, what he's trying, what his point, what he's trying to make here is that um, part of the reason why these things work and have so much weight is because he's dealing with shading. He's dealing with dolly. You know, he's not drawing anything organic just yet. Um, the drawings are very, if he was playing with marble, putting things together, all right? So why don't we go ahead and do some exercises? So the exercises, what I'm going to cover is, you have to create a library of things for yourself. So for an example, like people have told me I have a photographic memory. I don't, because when I draw, I usually, I may, I may be able to pop things out real quick, or like I'm able to draw things on model real quick, but I don't have a photographic memory by no means. I just I just don't do what everyone else does. Like 
when they look at a model, they do this. All I see here in this action is doubt. You're doubting yourself. You're looking at your work to make sure it looks like that. And then you make a line. Way too much doubting. Way too much. The way I see it is you should be able to look at it and then draw it. Where I got that from is from drawing caricatures. I used to draw people. I didn't have the time to sit and go or and then draw. No time. I had to make rent and I had to draw them like that. And I used to draw these things in three minutes, right? So what did I do to do that, right? Well, I made a library of stuff for myself, an arsenal of things like, like a tool belt full of things, right? Um, so when you're drawing the figure, you want to do the same. You want to create an arsenal and a library of tool sets in your head. Um, doing it on paper. So when you look at something the first time, that's it. Take a, and you do it. Now, do you do it exactly? No. Use this thing as a guide. That's it. Use it as a guide. Right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some, we're gonna build some tools for ourselves so we can teach our brain how to understand certain shapes, certain things, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is, I like drawing in gray, so let's draw in gray. Okay, so we're gonna draw the three major masses, all right? Okay, cool. Right? It's like the mechanical man, okay? So now what you gotta get used to All right, so now that we're drawing like this, right, what's helpful is these are just a bunch of lines now, right? But your brain, your brain, are, are, there are three different types of people. There's these people who know how to see things geometrically already in the head, which is phenomenal, which I think Bridgman does. Bridgman can see things like with weight, right? Then there's guys who see flat. That's me. I see lines. I don't see anything else. And then there's guys who can do a little bit of both, but really get to people. With me, since I see lines, I have to actually do the extra step by doing stuff like this. Just things that describe like, hey, you know, like, this thing has volume. Another example would be like, since we can't get much out of that, makes quite the difference as soon as we put it at an angle. Anything this like up close is actually quite boring and it doesn't make it too exciting, all right? Now we can, but what I'm trying to make the point is here is that as soon as you put it in an angle, you start to teach your brain how to see things in perspective a little bit.
So I would spend my time instead of going to like figure drawing classes, I would sit and do this all day. I would try to teach my brain how to see things three-dimensionally, you know, in my head. And so when I'm creating these these things, I'm starting to understand like the Richard book a little bit. Like, oh okay. So he draws like it thinks things were like in marble. Why not I start drawing things, you know, if there were cylinders and blocks too, right? And so then I got to a point where it's like, well, you know, it can be kind of boring, right? And then I thought, hey, why don't I just draw robots? It's kind of the same thing, isn't it? If you drew robots. So um, that's a fun way, I think, of looking at this whole situation, right? So, I mean, I ain't going to draw a robot now, but I mean, pretty much what I did was I would do a nice little gesture drawing, maybe something like, let's see here. Right? I'll do a gesture drawing like that. And then what I'll do is like, I'll put together like a block, right? And I'll try to make sense of it. And the reason why I try to stay away from cylinders is because it doesn't, it, it's not, I mean, it's so like, uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't give you a sense of direction as opposed to this. Then you can tell, oh, I see. It gives you an idea of this is like thin or thick, you know, a, a cylinder. Gives you, it does give it, you that feeling, but it's not as specific. Does that make sense? So I, I tend to do stuff like this. It gives me the opportunity to describe this shape a little bit more detailed. Okay. I'll still do some gesture drawing here just to get the basic idea. I'll probably do another pass on top of it. That looks a little lame. -o. Let's fix that. Make it feel more powerful than that. The thing is about roughing, I really enjoy it because it allows me to um, not be so careful, you know, just. I like to be loose. See, this is just a. I like to draw straight lines like this. Okay. And then possibly like get black, you know, and then like. Then start to get into that stuff. This is the animator in me, you know?
Anyway, um, I'm losing the basic point here. The basic point here is to when you do when you do figure drawing, you want to be able to draw this stuff. Let's draw this stuff off the top of your head. You just want to be able to build a library of things in your head that can help you that can help you like express yourself. So when you see a figure, you're able to just take a a snippet of it and be like, ah, I get it, you know. And the only way to do that is to really explore what it is you understand. What do you understand? What can you pull from yourself at the moment, right? So like, um, I'll I'll even do that for like like when I draw heads. I'll do this for basic exercises. And if I want to build on top of that, then you, you know, keep going. And the idea is just to keep building, building, and having a nice little arsenal in your head, right? So if I want to do something where like the body twists, I don't need a naked person in front of me to figure that one out. I'll see what I can do off the top of my head. And the idea is to starve your brain, to starve your brain of the information, try to figure out what it is you have inside. That way we get the answer, and somebody's twisting like that, you're like, ah. And then what, what ends up happening is you get a lot of Eureka moments. Um, so let's get first a basic figure like this, right? Alright, let's get it to twist. And then we can go a little further, right? We can start playing with the stuff. So here, start putting on obliques. But how about we push a little bit more? Like maybe we do something like, like this. kind of neat, you know, and you start to tell yourself, I didn't know I can go there. So you did it on your own, you didn't need references, nothing. We just pretty much took like something really basic, like this, right? We used the line of action just to kind of do that. And then, you know, we started playing with it, you know? And then that's the thing, there's a self-satisfying thing when you're able to trust yourself with what you understand. 
um, as opposed to be in front of a model and you do this all the time. By the time you're done, like half an hour has passed you by, you know, and I don't think it exercises what you understand. If anything, you're just doubting yourself to the point you get something on the paper from like a big like obstacle of doubt. Here, at least, there's a build of confidence. You're building confidence, so you're able to express yourself the way you want to. These are just tools that work for me. You don't have to follow any of this. It's just how I understand it. But when I see Bridgman, and I see him do the stuff he does, where he just has like random figures where it's like, He has them looking epic, like he's looking at the sun, right? Like, oh no. Let me grab that again. My uh, son made that wallpaper for me. <laughs> okay. So Bridgman will have stuff where it's like, these these figures feel like very majestic. And their chests are all out like that, right? And then you'll have like the abdomen kind of like this, and you'll draw little cool things here. But really, what he's building is he's building these forms if they were like made of clay, right? And then you can feel the power of the legs here. Where you'll do stuff like this. Um, so the idea is to, you know, play around with your shapes, right? And really what you want to do is just get your basic shapes. This, 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 right? And as, and as, and as boring as it is, it is boring. So what do you want to do to make it interesting? Turn it. And shade it. Get used to it. And then what it is here is you're teaching your brain to think three-dimensional. And you can take it to the next level, right? And start giving them a neck. Right? And then we can take it even further and we can start twisting it, right? We can start then bringing the chest out. was helpful so I hope what you got from it was take these basic shapes teach your brain you know these are the three shapes put all these shapes in different angles you know on your own 
Start messing with this, start twerking them around, right? Add shadows, all right? Whatever it takes for your brain to believe these things are real and that little wireframes are holding on to them, then you'll see that like the drawings just kind of start to come along and things are just forming itself. That way when you get a figure in front of you, it's cake. You get a figure in front of you, like, it's not too far away from the kind of stuff I'm doing. You know? And then the connection's a little better because you've already taught your brain and prepped your brain for an arsenal of things about proportion, you know, the way things look at different angles. And you know, the the, the more um, you teach your brain how to think like this and depend on its own, um, you'll see that um, speed will come, uh, your understanding of things will come through shapes and volumes. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any more questions, I'll make another video on your questions. And this is just another expansion of the bridge and stuff. Um, cool. Till next time guys, thanks and uh, subscribe and uh, share this video with everybody. I uh, would love to keep making more of these videos and keep sharing stuff. And obviously I'm really excited to learn from everybody else. So, cool. Have a good one.